From the dry deserts of Jordan, hello and welcome to this special edition of Environment. Water, water will be everywhere in this week's show, or rather the lack of it. A renewable resource in theory, water needs time to replenish, time it doesn't have here, and so the country is facing an increasingly serious water shortage. Farmers may soon be told to cut their crops and get rid of grazing in a bid to reduce pressure on water basins currently overused. In May, farmers, ecologists and politicians got together to form the Highland Water Forum, an attempt to get all users to change their habits. Agriculture in the Anzac region is on the front line. And while farmers are being told to use less, water en route to the Dead Sea is now being made salt free to satisfy a man's thirst, taking some pressure off the rural basins but leaving the Dead Sea with less fresh resources. Finally, underground water reserves are running dry, but petrol, it would appear, is plentiful. Tapping into Than Reserve, however, will put ever more pressure on Jordan's blue gold. So get ready for a show full of the wonders of water. Where I am now, for example, is an oasis in the heart of the Azraq Desert. 20 years ago, these marshlands existed naturally, but now they have to be maintained artificially, meaning water has to be constantly pumped in. It's a controversial project as while it maintains Jordan's history and biodiversity, locals question whether or not it's really the best use of such a precious resource. Well, our first reporter looks at a new initiative that wants to gain consensus among all water users as to how to move forward with management here, notably how farmers can adapt and change water-hungry cultivation. A piece of green in the middle of the desert. It's hard to believe that in such an arid region, the farmers managed to grow watermelons here, a fruit bursting with juice. You'd think it was a mirage. Water pumped from under the ground gushes freely into many reservoirs. The sad truth, however, is that most of this water gets wasted because it quickly evaporates under the glare of the sun. Thank God. This water is a gift from God. It makes us happy. The only problem is that we need a lot of it, and we're losing more and more every day. Our industry is threatened. In the Azraq region, water is a symbol of power, and it's also a rare commodity. The underground wells are drying up, and farmers are mainly to blame. Irrigation consumes two-thirds of the country's water resources. The fight against wastage, though, has only just begun. With this drop-by-drop -drop system of irrigation, we're saving twice as much water and the yield is better. Before, we had a very inefficient system which wasted a lot. This way is much better. It's not so easy for others to change their way of thinking, however. AMAD's a mediator tasked with engaging the farmers in new ways of water management. If you don't have good idea about how he can manage farm, he will lose everything, not just water. With water and also money in short supply, many farmers could soon be forced to abandon their land. This region consumes water at twice the rate it gets replenished. The underground wells are expected to run out in 10 years if the current random pumping continues. Without proper management of the groundwater resources here, things like tomato growing are likely to become a thing of the past. Well, it's not just in the Azraq region that waters are running dry. Here on the other side of Jordan, locals also have to watch what they drink and use. The Abu Hassan family has decided to give us an idea of their daily battles with water. Let's go and meet them. Salam, Aisha. Shukran. Well, Aisha and her family receive water for just five hours every week, after which they have to decide how they want to manage what they've stored. Indeed, as water shortages get all the more serious here in Jordan, new options are constantly being scoured. One of today's solutions, however, could lead to the death of the Dead Sea, unless it's controlled. There's no water. Even when you open the tap right up, there's no water. We have a little more than six cubic meters. It's enough to get us through to the next week, and then we restock with another six cubic meters. That's how we do it. In this small Jordanian village, there's running water just once a week. And Aisha and her son have learned to save all they can. When the tap runs, it can fill a whole tank in about five hours. It's the drinking supply for the whole family. Rainwater just isn't enough to fill up the tanks. We also have to use everything we can get from the tap. 
The water the state provides is usually enough. It's rare that we have to buy more. In fact, a Jordanian uses five times less water on average every day than someone in the United States. But that's not to say it's the same story across the country. There are vast disparities between urban and rural water use. To find out how Jordan supplements its supplies, we took a look at the desalination plant at Wadi Man, which provides a third of the capital Amman's residents with drinking water. Daoud showed us around. This plant is the biggest desalination plant in Jordan. It produces about 130,000 cubic meters a day. The brackish water the plant uses is allowed to settle and then filtered. To lower the salt content, it passes through seven different membranes, becoming fresher as it goes. Time for a quick demonstration. Looks like the process has worked. But the visit's not over yet. We want to know where the water comes from to begin with. The answer lies near the shore of the Dead Sea, in the Wadi Mujib Natural Reserve. We take the water that's running into the Dead Sea and pump it through the desalination plant to turn it into drinking water. But the question is, isn't that a danger for the sea itself? Well, we have to sacrifice some of the Dead Sea so we can drink. That's an understatement. Jordan's thirst isn't doing the Dead Sea any good. It's on its way to disappearing entirely by 2050. Well, here at the Dead Sea, these tubs of mud are a form of black magic. This mud is meant to have very good healing properties for the skin, a form of black gold, if you like, not the one currently causing controversy here. Petrol, it would appear, is plentiful in Jordan underground. Environmentalists say that extracting this oil will only make the water shortage worse. However, companies are still keen to gear ahead. Oil firms are facing a shortage of drilling sites, so it's no surprise they're so interested now in tar sands and oil shale rocks. Synthetic crude can be extracted from both these unconventional hydrocarbon deposits. Oil shale is in abundant supply in Jordan, where this plant will be built. Technology is there, uh, the resource is there, and uh, the market is there, uh, and the investment, we hope, uh, uh, to make to make the necessary arrangement for the investment, and we are sure Jordan is the place to invest. But environmental groups strongly oppose this kind of oil extraction, which would take place in desertic zones. To upgrade one barrel of shale, you need three barrels of water. Jordan is a very dry country. The production will require uh, require a uh, huge amount of water. We don't have that water, we don't have enough water for drinking purposes. We have lots of competition between sectors, agriculture, tourism and industry. Environmentalists believe Jordan should abandon oil shell projects and invest in renewable energies instead. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Environment. And so it's time to raise a glass to everyone who worked on this week's show, notably Young Chim, uh, Valerie Lagon and Lola Constantini. Thanks also to you at home for having joined us. I hope you enjoyed and that you'll drink with moderation. See you again next time.